Welcome to another episode of Matt Matt Live. You guys have no idea how incredibly awesome and how much trouble it's taken to get to this episode today. We've had all kinds of glitches. I was late, the internet was late, and now we're finally here. I'm so glad because I get to be with my new friend, Mr. Angel Ribo, and I am so glad to be able to share with you a few things about, uh, about this Mr. Pastor that uh, we're gonna have a good time talking to. <laughs> pastor, 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 uh, interviewed by Pastor Matt. So quite, quite fun times we'll have. Well, hello to you, and I uh, you. welcome you to our show. And if you could just uh, greet the folks today and let them know a little bit about who you are, what you do, what your company name is, that would be fantastic. Oh, absolutely. So th thank you, thank you very much for having me, Matt, and thank you for such a such a warm uh, introduction uh, today and presentation. And obviously, thank you everybody who's watching this interview, who's watching and listening to us today. So yeah, basically, you know, I was born originally near Barcelona in Spain. I lived in Dallas, Texas. I lived here for the last 10 years, basically, both corporate CEOs and established entrepreneurs. They, they hired me to bridge the gap globally for expansion and exposure. Basically, I helped them ac accelerate the growth of their businesses through using internationalization strategies. At the same time, you know, for the last 20 plus years, and that's the reason why I do this, my, my brand is the CEO Confidant, the CEO Confidant. And the reason why my brand is the CEO Confidant is because in the last 25 years, I've held more than 1,500 CEOs with the growth of their companies in 33 different countries. I was blessed with, you know, learning several, you know, foreign languages uh, and being able to do conduct business internationally. I also lived in Latin America for 10 years, and actually that inspired me to create my foundation. It's called Wisdom for Kids, Wisdom for Kids. And what we do there, we help underprivileged kids in Latin America become entrepreneurs using their local resources. So that's, in a nutshell, who, uh, who I am. Uh, Matt, thank you for having me. Yeah, that's fantastic. And uh, we talked earlier, and you had mentioned that you you spoke five or five or six languages. I have a hard time with one, but that's pretty good that you're able to do that. <laughs> you you said that uh, you learned that as as a child. Your parents actually mm -hmm. kind of you know, enrolled you at slash and or made you learn some different languages. Totally, but it's it's become very helpful in life now. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Actually, it was in seventh grade when I started to learn. Um, uh, French, uh, and actually, I think it was the same. Yeah, it was the, the next, the following year, I started learning English outside the school. So at the same time, well, I was learning French and English, and probably the, also I have to say that being in living in the northeast of Spain, you end up learning uh, Catalan, which is a different language, and also that that helps us a lot because it has a different phonetics compared to Spanish, so that allows us to learn Portuguese and learn French easier. That's probably one of the reasons why I was able to learn more languages when I was a kid. But at the end of the day, you're so right. It was mom and dad who said, you know, we would like you to do that. And I did it. And, it, you know, they, they offered the same opportunity, obviously, to my siblings. Yeah, that's really good. I can imagine as a father, <clears throat> you know, the feeling as a kid in seventh grade going, oh, my gosh, are you serious, mom and dad, right? And you're, you're like, why do I have to do this? Why do I have to do this? You don't even think about the big picture down the road. And then here you are now saying, oh, man, I'm so grateful that they, they made me do that because it's helped me so much in life. So if you're listening today and happen to be a kid like mine, maybe it's good to learn some things that you don't like because you, you might use them one day. Unless it's like calculus. And it's a whole other story. We won't talk about that right now. <laughs> so... <laughs> You talk about an organization, which uh, which I think is one of the, the areas where I remember uh, connecting with you about working with kids. Um, I'm, I've got a passion for kids as well, and I have a nonprofit organization, and we do some things you know, around the world too. But um, there's there's a heart behind that. So, what got you really interested in in starting that uh, that mm -hmm. organization and working with kids? Yeah, both, yeah. both my, my company, my brand, the CEO Confident and Wisdom for Kids, my foundation, I both started them when I left corporate America. 
And the reason why I was so inspired, actually I had an spiritual experience and I cannot express it in a different way. I did literally had an experience that made very clear to me that I had to create, uh, you know, uh, wisdom for kids. And I had the, after that experience, I reached out to a friend and he brought someone else. So we are three co-founders. We started this at the end of 2017. And the main reason is that when I was living, when I lived in Latin America for 10 years and actually was working in Latin America for five, for 15 years, I was always going, as you know, if you've probably been in Latin America as well, and most of our audience has been also maybe on resorts only, but if you've been in, re in the real deep Latin America, you've probably seen a lot of poverty because in Latin America alone, there are 81, 81 million kids that live in poverty and 22 million of them, 22 have no water no drinking water at home, just to put that in perspective. So as you can imagine, it's very easy to see poor kids. Every time I was going to visit my clients, in, when I was in Latin America, every time I was going to visit my clients, and basically my clients were like manufacturing companies, every time I was going to visit them, I would meet kids in need all the time because you know I would get to this manufacturing plants and the kids would come to me, hey, 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 senor, senor, would you like some gum? Would you like to buy a bottle of water from us? Would you? Would you allow us to keep your car safe while you are inside the plant? You mm -hmm. know, and this kind of thing. So I realized when I had this experience in 2015, I realized that I had been so blessed of being exposed not only with so many powerful people in Latin America with their businesses, the CEOs, the general managers, but also at the same time, I had been exposed with this other side of the world, which is the kids in it. So I said, oh, my God, who's going to do this? Who, who better than me can actually connect those two worlds that connect the worlds of, you know, the super powerful people, people that have a lot of experience in the world of business and in the world of life, because they have to treat, they have to deal with a lot of people, a lot of money, a lot of, you know, different issues at the same time, uh, who, who will be able to connect this world with the world of the other privilege. I said, not, I don't know anybody else better than me. So I started uh, along with two other people in uh, friends of mine in, in, in Mexico, wisdom for kids. That's amazing. Um, now, uh, you, you brought something up. You alluded to it. So I, I wonder if that's the case. So some of these CEOs, like you walk into XYZ plant in, in some city down there and you talk to the CEO. Meanwhile, you pass, you know, 15 kids that want to guard your car and sell you some water and gum. Uh, do you do you try to include that CEO of that company in his town where those kids are around his business in some form or fashion? Well, obviously, I, I couldn't do it at that time because it was so entrenched on my role, right? My role was like, you know, in charge. I was country manager or, you know, or um, dealing with the business of, of that particular area or leading a group of salespeople trying to serve this company or business development or whatever that was. Not, not at that time. But that's something that we have started to do, obviously, when we started Wisdom for Kids. The, the approach that we took, though, wasn't to to connect with the first with the CEOs, but our approach was to have the CEOs actually create content for the kids. So I have CEOs who have recorded videos, just the same way you and I are doing right now. I have recorded the interviews of CEOs who are talking to the kids in need in Latin America, telling them just what their story was. And you know, I have I have a. a Two very well, all, all three stories, for instance, that come to my mind that the ones that we use the most are you know, one man that was in the military that became a CEO of a large, you know, uh, industrial group, another one who literally runs you know, multi billion dollar companies, and, and he had a very humble origin in India, for instance. So, behind every single CEO, I have to say, very, very, very often, there are people that are coming from very humble origins, and not everybody has had the chance to go to you know Yale, Harvard, MIT, you know these Ivy League uh, colleges. You know many people have got into the top, let's say to the top of the summit of the of the corporate world or of the business world, uh, leading leading groups successfully, leading people successfully, and leading ventures successfully, uh, starting from from very 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 humble origins. Yes, no doubt. I've I've come across that a lot in my life as well with meeting a lot of CEOs that I work with and. Uh, you know, I guess another thought I have here, and I've, I've got a couple of, of, uh, of connections and ideas about this, but for a lot of those kids that are poor, um, that, uh, which you mentioned, you know, 81 million, 
Um, do do you have a resource or are you considering a resource for a lot of those kids that don't have any access to any internet or any any phones or anything like that, that that can't see that kind of content? Is there any thought process moving forward how you can attack that? That's a great idea. So this is this is actually so just I would like to, to picture this for the people, right? Because we say 81 million and it looks like, well, it's just 81 million, but 81 million is, you know, it's a, a fourth of, of the U.S. population, a little bit less than that. But I mean, 81 million is a whole, you know, bunch a lot. <laughs> of, the, of the, let's say, of the U.S. country as a country, right? So we, we were, we, we had this, this dilemma in the beginning, right? So what do we do? Do we try to go as broad as we can? So we start touching upon those kids, telling them, working on the self-esteem, working on the what their really power is, and trying to, to make sure that they awake, you know, they are awake to what the real power is. Or we try to make, you know, very in-depth relationships with them, and we spend a lot of time with them. And we decided that given the fact that there's 81 million kids, we'd rather start the journey for a lot of kids as opposed to going very deep with only a few, right? So what, how do you, and that's the, so the, and the follow-up question I, I'm, gonna, I'm going to ask myself is how do we measure success, right? Because unless you can measure, you cannot manage anything. So we measure success in, 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 in the numbers of people and communities that we can reach out to. Right, so it's not only the kids; it's also that all the families around those kids, and and the different and, and the places where we go. For instance, we try we try to go more to indigenous communities in Latin America because the level of poverty is ninety five percent, as opposed to, for instance, an urban community is only twenty five percent of poverty, or a suburban is tw is fifty percent. Just to give you some very basic numbers. So, since the very beginning, we decided, okay, so we want to make sure. That we're going to touch as many kids as possible because the the race here, right? The race is to touch as many kids as possible, right? I mean, then unfortunately, as you know, 12 months ago, all this insanity started and we had to stop traveling and we can't wait to see those kids. I mean, obviously, we have local local volunteers over there and they keep us, you know, up to date with what's going on in those communities. But the most important thing for us is we developed a com we developed a series of workshops. And what we do is we go to those communities, we, we, we talk to the community leaders, we basically agree on having uh, a workshop, you know, uh, given, delivered to the kids in that community, and then and then move on, move on, move on, right? Our local volunteers keep on in touch with them, and obviously through the, the workshops that we do, we screen who are the kids that are the most prepared to continue the journey. And also, obviously, you have to consider that, and because you know that in, in poor communities, not all the homes are structured, not all the families are structured, right? right? Um, and not all the kids are actually being raised by by their papa and their mama. You know, that's not it's it's not the case very often. And I'm just talking about the structure of the family itself, right? So there's a lot of variables here. That's that's why we spent two years, Matt. Two years we spent just developing the workshop. So 2016, 2017 was just to develop the workshop. We had two PhD students developing the workshop because actually one of the co-founders is a former professor of two different universities in Mexico. And he had, he had I mean, he's, he's personally trained thousands and thousands of teachers. So he was, a, he was a university professor in a university that trains the most teachers in Mexico. He's written more than 75, he's a, one of the co-founders, he's written more than 75 textbooks that are being still used today in Latin America. So we really put everything, you know, everything we got, everything we got, you know, <laughs> everything we got, we put it there to develop the most life-changing workshop we could do for those kids. And then we start, you know, piloting it. And and I'm going to use this actually as a, uh, a wonderful uh, statement you have behind you. You just you're just hiding it now, but but which is, God's God's got it right. God's yeah, got, God's got this. That's right. Exactly. God's got this right. So that's that's where we wanted to to even eventually reach out to. We wanted to have this feeling that God's got this. God's got this. You know that's why we started. Everything for, especially when you have no hope 
or no drive for a future, especially when your your family has nothing. I mean, then you're thinking, well, they've got nothing. My grandparents have had nothing. I'm destined to have nothing. So here's this organization telling me I'm going to be all this right. <laughs> I'm not going to be anything. So that's a great opportunity to pour into the lives of these other kids to show them the potential that they would have to to change the trajectory of what their their legacy is, for example. I mean, they, they can change the legacy of their family just by learning a few things, right? I mean, they don't have to be a CEO of a major corporation in their community, but if they know how to inspire others to action and to make a difference and chase after their dreams and goals, I think that changes everything, right? Oh yeah, totally. Because the, the main, as you know, we don't know what we don't know, and the kids obviously are not an exception. And the more isolated the community is, the least these guys know, these kids know. The first thing that when we, you know, our process, the first step is to connect with a community leader on a particular community. We know there's a lot of need. The first conversation we have with everyone is, hey, we would like to do this to your community, to your kids. The first question, always, always from the community leader is, and how much it is, is it? Mm. How much is it? That's the first thing. And then we said, no, 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 it's for free. And then suddenly they said, oh my God, really? All this that you just explained me, it's for free? Because also sometimes we we connect also with, with some schools. If we are lucky, there's a school in the area. And you know what the school teachers tell us? They tell us, oh my God. What you just told me, they will never, they will never hear again. I mean, they, they will never hear in the framework of the you know formal education in this area or in this you know county or in this community. They will never have this. They will never hear this. So it's either you give it to them, or nobody will ever give this to them. Nothing. It's all or nothing. Exactly. So uh, so they are thrilled, and and very often actually. I remember the case of, of a place, it was a suburban area where we went and and the, the, the principal of the school said, I'm not going to tell anybody. I don't want to inform. I should inform the director of the, the district manager and, and so many different levels, the regional manager. I'm not going to do it because what if they say no? <laughs> what if they say no? I cannot, I'd rather risk myself. I can rather put myself on the line if I know that my kids are going to receive this. And the, obviously, as you can imagine, the, the, the level of gratitude of these people, of every single leader, community leader that we go to, it's, you know, it's, it's just incredible. And yeah. just to put this in perspective, because obviously when we go to these communities, eventually, you know, we, we never go, we, we don't rent a car and then we, we drive 500 miles. No, 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 no. We take a local bus from the main city where the airport is. We take literally the bus that everybody else takes, everybody else takes. And we're jumping to the wood all our materials and everything. And we just go with the bus. And if it's six hours, if it's 10 hours, if it's 12 hours, it doesn't matter. So I was one day and there was a kid coming from Mexico City to one of the community's remote areas. And this is a very nice story. So he was going to this community. This community is actually the combination of 186 small communities. Okay. And this guy was one of the four that in his promotion, in his age, in his graduation year, one of the four out of almost 500 got the possibility to go to college to Mexico City. Wow. Okay, so just put into this, and, and he was telling me there were many more brilliant kids in high school than me in that rural area, in that remote area. Many more. There were 500 kids in that high school and many more were much brighter than me, much smarter than me. The only difference is that for some reason, I really, 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 really wanted to go to college. And I was able to go not only to college in my state, but to go to Mexico City, the capital city of Mexico, to do that. And this guy, this kid, he was 18 years old, had to actually every single morning, his classes started at 7, he had to get up at 4 every morning to spend two hours in public transportation from the very far north of Mexico City to where the campus was at the south of the city because he couldn't afford any other you know, accommodation but the one that was being provided by his estate in Mexico City. So when you hear those stories, you realize how much brilliance 
how much you know divine <laughs> is being lost in translation in like from these amazing kids with all this potential to what they really end up doing in their lives because they all of them when they finish back high school what do they do look for a job they will probably go to the fields this area that area specifically had a lot of you know coffee plantations probably they would end up going to do some work with uh, you know manual work with the coffee or work as a taxi driver or work in a grocery store you know you name it so yeah. that's why yeah, exactly. but, you know, neurosurgeon or a scientist or engineers and they end up driving a taxi or working at a grocery store or something because there's just that's the only options that they would have and it's just yeah. You, you work and you you live yeah exactly and and if, if they have if, if they're lucky enough to be in an area that has that receives some sort of tourism then they are really really lucky and they will have more restaurants and they will be able to be guides and they will you know as, as you know I mean, you, I mean again you've been in you've been in, in in Latin America so um but not everybody is as lucky as them as, as they are but put that into perspective several hundreds only four got to go to college. And he was lucky enough to go to Mexico City, you know. So uh, it's 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 that's why for us is we have to make sure that everybody listens the message that you are infinitely powerful, and from inside of you you have the full potential of becoming whoever you want. It doesn't matter whoever you want to be in your lives. If you've ever seen a movie, or you ever seen you know books, it's very it's very difficult for them to have books. Like we actually take a lot of books from here from the U.S. to Mexico both in Spanish and in English. But, um, you know, we want to make sure that they know that they can really become whoever they want. That's why we decided, as I said before, to go as much as broad as we can with Wisdom for Kids. So you have, uh, you said earlier that you have a couple of partners with you in this in this company yes. that you're, you're doing. So my thought process moving forward with expansion and reaching other communities and talking to other community leaders, um, I assume that you you also mentioned you have some volunteers. So are you um, training those volunteers as such so that they're able to go forward and represent the company or um, not the company really, but more like the movement, the your your outreach, right? Absolutely. Because you're not like jumping on a plane and getting on a bus and going from town to town to town to town to town, talking to these people all the time. You've got other people are doing that as well. Yes. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. So. Um, um, obviously, in order to scale, you have to be able that you have a system in place, and also that the organization is replicable. You know, so that they they can actually not only learn but also teach. Obviously, as you as you see me, I'm a very passionate guy. I like to roll up my sleeves, and you know, as as much as as often as I can, I go to the field and I do everything I can, and I love to. I mean, the, the workshops are not like it's not a it's not a whiteboarding you know thing. It's 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 a it's a it's extremely experiential. So we jump, we dance, we sing, you know, we, we exercise, we 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 play, you know, we dance, you name it. It's, you know, it's 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 a very powerful combination of the strategies to make sure that all those kids will not forget what we do with them. And actually, obviously, we, we also give them we give them a booklet so that they they will always remember what we did with them. Yeah. No, that's so powerful. Uh, my mind's going a thousand miles an hour because I've got so many ideas. Like uh, it's just such a great opportunity. And for those that are watching today, you know, one of the things that's that's so possible is for you to actually replicate what what Angel does as well. I mean, there's great opportunities around the world. Many of those folks that might be listening or watching today um, do have some connections and resources. And there may be some areas that um, that you can make an influence that you haven't thought of before that, uh, um, you know, the front side might take a little bit of time. Like Angel said, it took two years to develop their strategy, their plan and their workshops. Um, but maybe it's maybe it's not as intense as that. Maybe it's something a little bit different. It, there's there's all kinds of ways to, to accomplish those things, um, you know, but you'll never accomplish it if you never try. So it's, it's really important to try to give it a go. And I just love what you're doing there, Angel. It's a, it's a, a huge, uh, a huge thumbprint, a few figure print into the lives of people uh, to give them purpose and, uh, and hope and ideas of things that they can do. It gets their wheels turning. And it's just exciting to be a part of something like that. I know that um, I've been to a, a, a town called Reynosa, mm -hmm. um, uh, I know Reynosa. Yeah, it's um, 
it's it's an interesting community <laughs> to say the least um there are people that live literally in cardboard boxes i've seen families that live in a, a lot of them are, are in these little cinder block homes with I mean, it's just a dirt floor, a, a square box that they, of, of cinder blocks with maybe a separating wall. And there may be two families living in that space. Absolutely. And it's it's just crazy. And there's also, you know, there's a lot of, um, it's a spiritual community and it's not exactly the best of spiritual communities. I've, I've ran into a lot of uh, devil worshipers and, and a lot of evil things that happen there. And I think some of that spawned just because of people's desperation and their need for something and they they just turn to sometimes the bad things you know i tell some people it's not as exactly that you're that they're bad people they're just good people that make some bad decisions right and they don't have some of the options or, or opportunities to make some better choices and by doing what you've done you've injected communities with better choices better options better ideas and the ability to move forward instead of stagnating or or moving back you know so thank you for doing that so much and and you know before we go here i want to just touch again on your uh, ceo side of things uh, because i yeah. i'm a confidant as well i love to be there for people i love to be an ear or a shoulder for people and i assume that's definitely one of your gifts and talents that you do that's why you created this company and uh i would i also assume that uh it's because you make it easy for people to talk with you and start, CEOs end up opening up to you about more than what they may have just asked you to for scaling their business or learning how to streamline this, this stuff or whatever they end up saying, you know, Angel, now that we're talking, I feel blah, 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 right? Do you find it easy that, that more people open up to you um, where you go and you have a chance to be that kind of a confidant uh, more so than just the guy who came there to help them with whatever that thing was in their business? Yeah, for yeah. me, for me, I think it's extremely difficult to consider that in your life you have boxes. We, t we tend to put boxes, everything in boxes. We, you know, we, we, our life is like made up of different kinds of boxes. It's like the family box. You know, it's like the parents box. There's our siblings box. There's our friends box. And that actually there's different kinds of friends. So we might have even different boxes with friends. Right. So we, we tend to put everything into boxes. So we we'll feel more comfortable. I really believe that that's not that's just an illusion. I, I believe it's an illusion. And to your point, absolutely. So when you start working with someone and they really see what you stand up for and what you really do, then the personal connection immediately happens. And when there's an when there's a personal connection, what you know what? When there's a personal connection, then you know they realize that they you can be much more than just a consultant or just a trainer, or just a sales trainer or consultant. It's you can be so much more. So exactly. So. You end up talking about many more things. I, I think that, and we were joking about. I, I would like to actually make this point now because we were joking, and he was joking about my last name. My last name is Rivo. I have two last names in Spain. We have two last names as, as other Latin American countries. My second last name is Pastor, <laughs> and when I came to the U.S. actually for the first time, because I left, I left Spain for good in the '90s. It was the first, the first time ever anybody was asking me, Mister Pastor, was. When they actually look at my passport and obviously they go to the last word in my name and they go mr pastor because it's my last name so it's funny how how the, my name angel and my pastor second last name how they have even without me thinking about it played a role in my life just because i think that i i can hear i can listen i can listen to people from my heart and i can also speak from my heart and i think that 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 resonates with people and i think that people realize that there's a difference there you know when we are in corporate and probably definitely resonate with this too we are also in a box in a big massive box with many different things right we live in a different world for many years i lived there for more than 20 years um so when i lived in that box uh we we actually feel very lonely because we have to fulfill so many things and there's so many people and we have to make everybody happy and there's politics involved and you, the, more, the more the company grows, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? We're still human beings. When you when you read those, those statistics that say 70 plus percent of employees in America are not engaged, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. What is the connection? Going back to the initial conversation, right? So what is the connection? I consider myself that I'm really, that the work I'm doing really 
besides everything that I have already shared with you, is connecting the unconnected. Connecting the unconnected. And guess what? At the top of many corporations in the world, and America is not an exception, connection is needed. Connection is, and I'm talking about human connection. That's why Confident, the CEO Confident came to me so naturally. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. I, I share the same passion. Um, we, we're very well parallel in a lot of areas. Folks that know me that are watching the show know that for sure. So I'm, I'm just excited to have you here and share your information. So thank you. Uh, in that thought process as we're getting ready to go here, if folks want to reach out to you uh, in reference to your organization to help kids, uh, the, the wisdom side of things, right? That's That would be a wise yep. choice. Uh, or if they're interested in somebody who is a CEO that feels like they don't have that kind of a connection, they feel they can talk to some people, but not the way that you're talking about that might be actually helpful for them in their life. How can folks reach out to you, Angel, and be able to Thank connect you. those things? Absolutely. Thank you very much. So it's very easy. As you see, my name is Angel. My last name is Rebo, R-I-B as in boy O. My, the easier way to reach out to me uh, because I, I or, or either my team or myself, we always respond to all the emails, is sending an, me an email directly to my uh, to my mailbox, which is angel at angelrebo.com, angel at angelrebo.com. I'm very active online. I post every single day, both professionally and personally. I believe very much on personal stories. That's why I post so much about pers personal, pers my personal life and my personal stories and others, other people's stories. You will see me. I'm very, very, very active on LinkedIn. Uh, that's the, I would say the, the network of my of my choice. Although you uh, you will see me everywhere, but I'm on LinkedIn every single day. You know, I have as many other people. You know, thousands of, of connections, and I have a lot of conversations with them every single day. And that's that's where I where my business lives mostly. Yes, that's fantastic. Well, obviously, I'm a big LinkedIn fan as well. We've got a great great family, great network here at LinkedIn. And it's great to have been able to connect with you and folks can find you very easily on LinkedIn or at uh, at your website, angelrebo.com, right? So uh, you've got, which is pretty easy to remember, just look at his name, folks, at .com. You're pretty good. Like kind of me, I did the same thing. Exactly. Except I'm, I'm dot .t, people think I have a TV show. Can I be on your TV show? It's just, that's my website. <laughs> that's funny, but anyway, it's been so great getting the chance to know you today, Angel, and to be able to share what you're doing with people to help around the world, both uh, professionally on a corporate level and through communities around the around the world. Um, and I'm, I'm assured that there's folks that might be listening today that, that may be able to be a part of that organization in their community. And maybe they want to reach out to you about you know, volunteering or learn how they get plugged in. There might be some folks listening today in Latin America or that region of the, of the world. Um, I'm sure they could reach out to you and you'd, have, you'd be able to point them in the right direction. But um, what a joy to meet you. I wish we could be on here for all day and share all kinds thank of you. stories with people, but uh, we, we, we only have so much time. And uh, I just want to say again, thank you for what you do. Thank you for your passion for people. Thank you for your continued drive. A lot of those things that have come since your upbringing from incredible parents that uh, that poured into you and were willing to, you know, to, to do the things that required you to become successful. And here you are. So thank you so much for that. And there's several nuggets you just brought up that we could talk about when it comes down to business and scaling and how to how to grow. And, and that's a whole nother episode. But uh, there's a lot of wisdom there. Obviously, if you're a, a CEO confidant, you have the ability to share with some CEOs, things that they could do to make things better in their life and their business. So uh, again, folks, reach out to Angel. That's uh, angelrebuild.com. And thank you again for being here for another another episode of Matt Chat Live. Thanks, thank Angel. You. Thank you.